until that little nuclear misunderstanding. So now, there are only six of us. of us found our way to this farm. Now all we have to do is rebuild society and settled into a daily routine. Farming has proven to be a complex activity, continually posing new and exciting challenges. Boy, you think we're never going to be able to get that big rock out of the field? Well, the sooner we move it, the sooner we can start plowing. There's incentive for you. <laughs> well, I guess farming's nothing like pathology, huh? huh? Oh, I'll say. When you have a man lying on the table, cut open from throat to navel, his liver sitting on the scale, somehow you think the good time's gonna last forever. Oh, no, not the diary again. Please, even Anne Frank took a day off. That movie was so sad. Well, look around you, lady. Sorry you have a problem with the diary. I just think there should be a record for future generations. What future generations? Huh? You said you're writing that for future generations. Who's that? Well, you know, kids. I guess I figured that eventually nature would take its course and we'd all pair off and have them. <laughs> Who want to bring a child into this world? I mean, there are no schools, no playgrounds, no ice cream trucks. No suspiciously friendly gym teachers that lure you behind the equipment shed with a snow cone. <laughs> Well, I know that we all thank and respect Jack for sharing. <laughs> and in his own special way, he brings up an important point. Now, we may not have the benefits of civilization, but we don't have its problems either. There's no crime, no gangs, no drugs. And it seems to me that if we're really serious about starting a new society, our first responsibility is to keep it going. Yes. To have kids. Yes! This could be wonderful. Don't you see? We could all be the child's parents. We could... We could raise it communally, like the Hebrews in the kibbutzim in the ancient land of Israel. Oi. <laughs> this is all well and good, but how do we go about having this baby? Guy? <laughs> it's pretty simple. Look, instead of thinking of each other as just workmates and companions, we start to think of each other as potential life mates, partners, parents. And, of course, that is regardless of race, creed, color, or national origin. There's only one of me here. Why don't you just say, regardless of Fred? Actually, I, I wouldn't mind having someone to pass this watch along to. Oh, was it your father's? No, it's just extremely expensive, and I'd rather not any of you have it. So we're agreed, then. We should make a baby? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Now what? We had to find some way to break the ice, to get to know one another. And so we chose the method by which men and women have been getting together since the dawn of time, the mixer. Welcome, Mark. So glad you could make the mixer. I juggled a few things. I'm not real good at social gatherings. Yeah, they're always awkward. I think I'll just sort of fade back into the crowd. <laughs> good luck with that. Enjoy the mixer. Nice mixer. Real nice. Mark. So, that's some rock out in the field, huh? Oh, 
Fearless men jump and die. Men who mean Jack? just what they say. Jack, don't you think you could play something other than the ballad of the Green Beret? Nope. It's the only record here. We lucked out. <laughs> I'm out of here. Patrick, where are you going? The party's just getting rolling. I'm a pathologist. I know when something's dead. This party ought to have a tag on his toe. Dancing through. <laughs> Ever been skiing in Stad? When you stay in New York, do you prefer the Sherry or the Pierre? <laughs> Think we'll ever get that rock out of the field? I don't know. It seems really stuck. <laughs> Isn't it, though? <laughs> May I cut in? America's best. <laughs> <laughs> Back at home, a young wife waits. Her green beret has met his fate. He has died for those oppressed. <laughs> Gosh, I think the mixer went well last night, don't uh -huh. you? Uh-huh. <laughs> Ruth, I'm sure it'll take another one or two mixers until the men loosen up enough to ask us out. <laughs> I was thinking tomorrow night. Oh, gee, I can't. I have a date with Curtis. Oh, I see. Well, then we could make it Thursday night. Oh, no, that's when I'm going out with Mark. Let's see. Friday's Frederick, Saturday's Jack. How about Sunday? I don't believe this. <laughs> I am the second to the last woman on the face of the earth, and I still can't get a date. <laughs> Alice, are you upset? Okay. Okay, I know what's going on here. You see, the men are just practicing on you in order to work their nerve up to ask me out. Yeah! yeah. That's it, I'll bet. What are you, stupid? That's the most ridiculous <laughs> rationalization I've ever heard. Let me ask you something, Suzanne. Do the men know that you're dating all of them? Well, I haven't really told them yet, but I don't think they'll mind. They've all been in really good moods ever since I said yes. Fighting soldiers from the sky. Pow, pow, grooving cats who jump and die. Thank you. Jack, my man. Oh, cost looking good. You <laughs> hey, how about give me a hand with this, homie? You got it. Hi, and how are you fellas doing this morning? Doing great. We're primo. <laughs> the sun is shining. We got manly work to do. Yep, we're lifting something heavy, and that's why we feel good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that nice? Now, there was just one thing I wanted to mention to you. Now, what was it? Uh, oh, yes, I remember. Suzanne has made dates with each of you. <laughs> and I thought you were my homie. The word homie doesn't belong in your mouth. You take that back. Oh, they're just wasting their time. This lady has a sweet tooth, and I'm her candy man. What are you going to do, try to get her in the back seat of your cart? Yeah, well, you wouldn't talk so tough with a 50-foot ball of twine stuffed in your mouth. Oh, yeah? Come on, rich boy. Oh, you want some? Come and get it. All right, all right. This has gone far enough. Just look at yourselves. Frederick, you put down that bottle. Curtis, retract that antenna. And Jack, you put that ball of twine back in your cart before you hurt someone. <laughs> this is all my fault. I'm sorry. Oh, I think there's enough blame to go around. Jack, sorry. Sorry. Yes, sorry. Well, we still have a baby to make. What are we going to do? Well, we could have another mixer. No! <laughs> Look, and the second any two of us pair off, it's just going to turn into this kind of thing again. Not necessarily. Not if we remove the emotional component. What are you talking about? Genetic engineering. We scientifically determine who is the most superior male and the most superior female among us. Then those two individuals will go inside that house, walk up those stairs, take off their clothes, and engage in sexual intercourse. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Is there a wall socket up there? <laughs> So 
we set about to determine which male and female among us would produce the best offspring. To that end, Frederick devised a series of tests to measure the qualities we felt would be most important in our new world. These included intelligence. Go! We also tested physical prowess. You got it. And finally, medical fitness. With the tests completed, we all waited nervously as Frederick made his final computations. All right, I have the results. Suzanne, dear, why don't you run inside and get ready while I run through the obligatory In a Way We're All Winners song and dance. <laughs> Representing the men. <clears throat> Mark Braddock. Yes, yes! <laughs> Yet, in a way, we're all winners here. Congratulations, Mark. The best man won. Oh, thanks. You just watch yourself in the yard, Braddock. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have no idea where that came from. Representing the women. Alice McConnell. So, Alice, I guess we're the new Adam and Eve. <laughs> Looks like the future generation will be a short, pushy lot. As luck would have it, Alice had taken her temperature every day for the past seven years and had become an expert on her fertility cycle. <laughs> Soon, her peak time arrived, and the group arranged a small send-off celebration for us. Do me a favor. Try and leave her speechless. <laughs> I'd like to propose a toast. As the bubbles in this champagne rush to the surface of our glasses, so too may Mark seed rush to the haven of my fertile womb. Are you nervous? Oh, nervous, terrified, mm -hmm. but at the same time exhilarated to think that I will be carrying inside me the first child of our new world. Mm, and Mark is pretty cute. <laughs> oh, please, Suzanne, this has nothing to do with sex. Although I hope that little cowboy takes me for the ride of my life. That is so beautiful. So, guys, any words of wisdom? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well. Well. <laughs> Alice, I really think that. Oh, uh, sorry. Sorry? Sorry, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just going to tell you that you look great. What were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to ask you how I looked. <laughs> how do I look? You look 
great. Oh, that's so sweet of you to say. <laughs> so. So. <laughs> Is that enough foreplay for you? <laughs> oh. <clears throat> you look very sexy in that kimono. Well, it's just a little something I found up in the attic. It's a funny coincidence. I've always had this secret geisha fantasy. What is it? Hey, it's not important. <laughs> What's wrong? I'm kind of stuck in neutral. <laughs> what? Oh, oh. <laughs> well, is there anything I can do? Most honorable Maki-san. <laughs> taking them so long? Maybe they went out to get condoms. <laughs> That's moronic on so many levels. <laughs> Say, have we given any thought to what we're gonna name the little tyke? A name's important. Yeah, you don't want it to rhyme with something icky. I think his name should have character, should have tradition. I like Skippy. <laughs> Sounds like a doll. <laughs> It was my grandfather's name. Could he catch a frisbee in his mouth? Well, so what if he could? Anything? I'm not sure. Could you repeat the part where the warlord spares the geisha's life, but for a price? Yes, <laughs> save your life, but a string or cash. Oh, no, 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 Yes, yes, come on, right here. <laughs> Alice. I'm sorry, Alice, what's Mark, wrong? I'm sorry, it's not your fault. It's just that something does not feel right. Uh, I know what you mean. <laughs> Take it back! I will not! <laughs> I'm telling you, our child's gonna be named Jaleesa! I'll see you in hell first! To me, to me, to me, to me! To me, to me, to me! To me is too a good name! It's way Oh, please, look at yourselves. Good God, Nancy Kwan survived the big one. What is going on here? We were having a disagreement about what to name the baby. I wanted to me. Jaleesa. S. Prescott. Skippy. <laughs> You can just stop it because there isn't going to be a baby. No baby? What? Why? Things didn't go quite like we'd planned. And I can see why. <laughs> Your nails look good, but you have a lot to learn about blush. <laughs> no, no, this was for Mark's benefit. I found it up in the attic and he needed some encouragement. Oh, I you don't I have just... to pull any punches, Alice. We're all adults here. I had a little bout of impotence. Girly boy. <laughs> Thank you, Frederick. Well, my friend, looks like you've been vacationing in Lake Flaccid. <laughs> hey, that's enough. 
I don't have to take this. At least he can get his dander off. No. <laughs> oh, okay, now just leave Mark alone. I was the one who finally lost interest. Something just didn't feel right. I think I may know what the problem was with us. It was us. I don't think this group is ready to be parents yet. What makes you say that? <laughs> Look at us. Look at how we've been behaving. Our impotent friend is right. <laughs> I mean, good God, what's happened to me? Apart from insider trading violations, I've never used a phone as an instrument of harm before. And I've never had a fight to the death over a kid's name before. Me either. This would be the second one for me, but the first one was a completely different thing. And I have never degraded myself by performing in someone's sick and twisted geisha fantasy. <laughs> Well, I guess we're not the stuff good parents are made of, huh? Well, maybe not yet, but hey, we've been through an awful lot. It takes some time to adjust. And I'm sure that one of these days, the time will be right, and then we will have our child. Mm. Well, I guess it's a good thing, then, that Mark couldn't be... well, you know... a man. <laughs> no, don't you see? Unconsciously, I must have known that it was too soon for us to have a child. So that's why I held back at first. Yeah, right. Sure. <laughs> ha! <laughs> and so we all agreed that children would not be part of our immediate future. But someday they will come. And I can't help but wonder which of our traits will be passed on to future generations. What's the next whoops? They may have survived the end of the world, but can they survive each other? You dry your socks in the toaster? <laughs> Not usually, but my underwear's in the oven. Oh, there it is. An all-new episode next Sunday on Fox. Not done.